right fam so we are back at again with another crazy video now today we got a video from soc 119 I don't know. Look, I guess it's like sock 190. I don't know, bro. But look, we got another video from the well. This is probably my second. Yeah, I think this is my second video reacting to them. But this is exploring white privilege. Okay, so we're gonna go deep. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna go deep without further ado, man. Let's get it. Let's go. So you're gonna explain white privilege yeah, to this guy. Yeah, all right. So the, do you see, this guy? Have you ever? Do you sit? In, do you look in the mirror and think about your white privilege, bro? Not usually, no. Okay. I mean, in other words, never. All right. <laughs> All right. So the way I look at it is it's probably a combination of like two things, right? So the first thing is, you know, if you were to just like say, let's say like before you were born, right, it was like you're going to be either born white or black, and then you were randomly selected into like one white or black family, you, most people, if their goal was to be born into the, like the best opportunity, you would choose white because there's more white people in better opportunities than there are black people in good opportunities. And not only in this country, but like in the whole world. So like all black people and all white people, right? And then another thing is depending on which country you're in, like, you know, America, um, like I don't know, like I'm white, right? And I have some black friends that say being black never held them back about nothing. And then I have, some, I have some black friends that say like their whole life is different because they have all these opportunities that they couldn't get to because they're black. So I, I don't know about that, but that's another perspective, which is that, you know, just like same thing kind of like with being like a man, right? Is like you don't know what you're given, right? Because like, like you, it could be anything. Like you go to a, like this is like a little example, but like go to a grocery store, right? All right, hang on, assume... hang on though. Before you give that example, go to Alaire first. We can come back to that. Okay. Um... To express or to tell you about your privilege, I think we should talk about your parents. The fact that both of them um, are seem like they're financially stable and your father became an engineer off the fact of um, having a friend that he raced cars with, that's amazing. Um, that, is, that shows that if an African American was in that same situation, the likelihood of that would not be um, even existent. Um, also, you're in a frat, so that means you have time to, you know, drink beer and hang out with your friends and do stuff like that. On the other hand, a lot of students that have to pay for school, go through school, um, X, Y, and Z don't have that luxury. So right there you have the luxury of being in a frat, having parents that are able to provide for you. I feel like it's not necessarily just your parents, you're, you, like you yourself, you're not the privilege. The privilege is in society, and that's just because, like, America. Like, America was built on white privilege, so it's kind of, it's like so, like, you see, it's enrooted. Like, it's not even, it's subconscious. So when an employer, like, let's say your mom walks in to, like, a job, you said she's office management something like that yeah yeah so let's say when she walks in there you know she'd have the same tone and then like someone of another look our aspects have the same tone and the employer subconsciously is just gonna gravitate more towards her maybe because the other person comes off aggressive but they're doing the same exact thing and like he just said if someone of like another race were to say something like what what she just said, yeah, or something like what I just said in the same exact tone, it would be subconsciously interpreted another way. So that's why, like, the privilege comes into the way society, like, automatically views a certain group. So, like, one group is automatically subconsciously viewed as aggressive, while the other seems like, oh, you know, this is more suited for the workplace, different things like that. So it's not just, like, you and your family itself. It's America. And I feel like in order for us to fix, like, that part of America, which – you know, was made in like the 1800s and slavery and Jim Crow and all that. I feel like we have to acknowledge like that it's a thing and that's like we have to circumvent it in that way. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks, man. Um, dude, what do you, what do you, so what, tell us about your white privilege here. They're laying it out to you. What do you have to say? Um, <laughs> what, what I'm getting I can't wait till your frat <laughs> brothers are watching this. They, are, they still are right now. Um, I I don't. They're kind of making it seem that I was born into it, and uh, that we that us as whites have a better opportunity because of the subconscious mind. No, just you. Just like uh, that me? you have a better opportunity. Yeah, just just me. Uh, sure. Yeah. What do you think about that? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think so. <laughs> you don't think so? Yeah. This, yeah. No. Or you don't see it. I don't. Maybe I don't. Yeah. Sure. I don't see it. Let's go with that. All right. So okay, that's cool. Got it. So this is, mind you, this this is what what we're dealing with, right? It's like 
we got to find a way to say it. We're going to come back to you for a second, bro. But in the meantime, I want to. We're going to come back to you real fast, given what you said. It's built into society. So, do you the nice, dude? You know, I don't. So, t- what? What's your story? Um, You're white, right? Yeah. So my parents are divorced, um, and when they got divorced, my mom wasn't working. Um, so it's kind of just been like slowly working up to where we are now. Um, but even then, I would consider us pretty poor. Like we've never owned a house. We've been running pretty much my entire life. My dad was remarried, and his family like makes more money than us. But with me, and my sister primarily living with my mom, we I would consider us pretty poor. But okay, so how do you how do you incorporate her into it, bro? You can join in on this. How do you incorporate just, that? Because you said it's built mm. into society. Yeah, she must be in, in living society, in a different society. But there's anomalies, like, at the same time. Like, I feel like white privilege is saying, oh, every single white person is, like, privileged. But at the same time, like, fashionally speaking, you know, your family, not you specifically, but people in general, their families are more likely to have generational wealth just because of simply the way, like, America is built. Like, you're built to more likely have privilege in society. Oh, bro, <laughs> this, is the, th- this is the problem. This is truly the problem with my people. We talk about white people being raised or being so white privilege being built in society and America being built off white privilege and all these different things and and white people are more likely to have generational wealth and things that actually did is that what she said? I just want to make sure. Just want to make sure I don't want to put words in people's mouth, okay? So let me just make sure. Simply the way like America is built, like your are more likely to have generational family, not you specifically, but people in general, their families are more likely to have generational wealth just because of simply the way like America is built. Like- so people are, you know, more likely to have generational wealth. The, the thing when it comes to generational wealth, and I don't know what this whole white privilege thing come from, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I guess it's because I live in Chicago, so when I see the white people out here, uh, I don't see privilege. You feel me? That's just me. I don't see it. You know what I'm saying? And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that there are certain situations, maybe in other areas, where white people may get away with this or this and that, but this is not just, this is not even the majority. You know what I'm saying? Because what I truly believe is that nobody's privileged in America. That's what I truly believe. Or we can put it like, when I say privilege, I'm talking about privilege in a way that they speak of white privilege. Or I can say that we're all privileged in a way because we have that freedom of speech. We're all living in America. We have different opportunities. We can do this. We can do that. And I'm, we're privileged. We're all privileged in that, t- in, that act, in that aspect. But the way that they view white privilege, I don't believe that nobody's privileged in the way that they view white privilege. And when it comes, and I, like I said, when it comes to generational wealth, the reason why there's a lot of white people being, or white children, or white people well, white people having kids and their kids being raised up into the the uh generational wealth thing is because the parents the parents they set up their kids for success before their kids was even born see a lot of times in the black community we don't set our kids up for success we you know what i'm saying we we push them to do this and do that like instead of setting them up for success so that way they could start a business that way they could do this that way they could do that or we start a business for them and maybe if they get older and they want to take over the business they can because it already has a lot of money within the business you know what i'm saying if you, i hope that y'all get what i'm saying because at the end of the day bro i want to set my kids up for generational wealth just like how some white people set their kids up for generational wealth i could never blame a white person for being born into generational wealth uh and i can't say that their parents was privileged or things like that because at the end of the day in america you have to work point blank period you feel me and i believe that we all have the same i have the same opportunities as a white person i truly believe that you know what i'm saying while living in america i believe that i can go to the same job as a white person i can do this as a white person i can do this as a white person because look at it like this you telling me that if i have all the qualifications i have all the degrees i have all the diplomas i have all these different aspects or all these different Things that I need in order to get the job, and there's a white person who don't have not a single thing. He probably got like one diploma or anything like that. And the way that I look now, the way that I look, I, you know, I'm suited up. I'm looking very professional for the job. I'm ready to go. You feel me? The white person is the same way, but he don't have all the things that he needs. He don't have all the requirements that he needs. You feel like they're gonna at any business job. You feel like they're gonna waste the time of training somebody who barely have the rec- uh, the the requirements, or is they gonna take somebody who have all the requirements that they need, whether they black or white? That's just that. That's how I view it. 
You feel me? That's how I truly view it. Because I know that every job I done went to, every job that I done been to, I always go in professional. I always got my requirements. I always got the documentations that I need in order to get the job. You know what I'm saying? And me personally, I never got turned down for no job. No job. Every job that I applied to, I never got turned down from. I only been working at two jobs my entire life. My entire life, I only had two jobs. Now, I'm a YouTuber and things like that, but I also do work, too. So, again, I never got turned down from any job that I had. The only reason I only got two jobs because I only took two jobs. Everything else, I didn't take because I just didn't like it. That's just me, personally. I just didn't. I was like, eh, I ain't really feeling this, so I didn't take the job. But I, didn't, ne I never got turned down from it. Never. So, I don't know where this white privilege thing coming from. I'm sorry. I just rambled. I'm just trying to figure out what this whole white privilege thing, because this is still a topic that we've been talking about for almost two years, three years, or just for it. Well, for this channel, we've been talking about this topic for almost two years now on this particular channel. I know this topic in America been surfing for years and decades and all type of stuff, but let's finish. You're built to more likely have privilege in society. Okay, bro, do you want to respond to her? Like, how would you incorporate her? Um, well, I, I was also grow up kind of poor. Where'd you grow up, bro? Well, I grew up in Lehigh, and it's like a small town, kind of like pretty far east from here. Okay. It's like pretty depressed town. So hot, and okay. Then, what? Depressed? Yeah, there's like, like a lot of, like, you, this, it's actually mostly white, but I mean, there's a lot of people doing drugs. It's like not a good place to grow up, and it was really bad environment, so like, that wasn't white privilege. You know what I mean? So like, but I don't really think that has anything to do with white privilege, because like, there's black people that are very rich and very famous, and there's white people that are very poor. It doesn't necessarily mean that... White privilege doesn't exist. So this doesn't this doesn't negate white privilege. Well, how would you? How no, do you, it's okay. just an outlier. Yep, I got you. How do you um, incorporate her story into it? So I think that white privilege talks about how you can access agency. Like, what can you do? So, like, say hypothetically, you're saying that you grew up poor. However, you do attend a PWI, and I feel like that that up that that in itself gives you a privilege versus somebody who let's say that was um person of color in your situation mom wasn't working x y and z would they still have the opportunity to attend penn state so i'm not necessarily saying i'm not invalidating anybody's experience because i feel like it's all valid but what i'm saying is that white privilege sometimes gives you the freedom to access better opportunities and it's since solely off because you are um white Okay, so you 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 caught that right? You, that, you that's you you said that really well. Like you oh, know what thank I mean? You. No, no, no. You like you laid that. That's the point that you're going to lay out. It's mm -hmm. like it gives you a certain amount of uh, privileges just being white. However, here's the however. however. Man, you you are you are walking on a razor's edge I to know. say that like she her being white somehow this. This is in this some kind of microwave or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, gives, it's a razor's edge. No, I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. But let's say, like, even as far as like funding, and I'm not saying you in particular, but I'm saying, if if it comes down, if you present your story and somebody else presents their story, who who would get scholarships? Who would get funding? And I'm not saying I don't I don't know your financial background. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that if you take a black person and a white person on equal playing fields, you go up in a poor neighborhood, drug infested, so on and so on. Who has the better chances of making it out? And that's where white privilege plays a role. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying like, oh, well, white privilege, you're going to get to do all this and all that. I'm not saying that. But if me and you are on an equal playing field, come from the same background, socioeconomics, then will we still have access to the same things? Probably not. Bro, it's a mindset thing. It is a mindset thing. I don't know why we have a victim mindset. I don't know. But it's just a mindset thing. Because I don't, me personally, I don't think like that. And I know other people who are people of color that don't think like that either. I don't know why certain people of color think the way, I don't know why I'm saying people of color like I'm not black. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why my people, I'm going to just say my people, you feel me, uh, think the way that they think. You know what I'm saying? Majority of them. Because at the end of the day, like I said, I I believe that it's a mindset. It's it's truly a mindset. If you telling me that, because you tell it, let's say you telling your kids this. Oh, just to let you know, uh, you got a white person, you got a black person. You're black and you got your white friend, and y'all both grew up in the same neighborhood. Y'all both go apply for the job. Well, well you're not going to make it out because 
it's always been something that you always have the end of the stick, okay? And they're going to make it out because they've always been privileged or they may, their mother and father may be this top. But like, come on, bro. Let, let's just be real. Like, bro, you tell your kids that, bro. Like, come on now. Now they're going to have a victim mindset also. Like, now you putting that 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 uh that, that mindset on them. When they shouldn't even be thinking the way, you know what I'm saying? Thinking that way, pe point blank, period. Point blank, period. I'm telling you, bro, like, we need to get out that mindset because at the end of the day, if a white person can do it, I know for a fact that I can do it. I know for a fact that I can do it, bro. It's just that I have to, I can't just, I can't just sit around on my butt all day and think that, you know what I'm saying, that, oh, yeah, it's going to just come to me. Because it didn't just come to them. Now, granted, some people are raised up in money, but it's not their fault, and I know that their parents worked 10 times hard to get to to get to the point where they at, so their kids can be good. See, my people don't do that. We don't work ten times hard to to get our kids to a place where we don't want we don't want them to be where we was at. So we we don't work ten times hard so we can save up money so when they're born they can you know what I'm saying have all this money and they can be born into money too like LeBron James kids like. Uh, all these other Kevin Hart kids, all these other black kids that's raised up into money because their parents work so hard so their kids don't have to go through what they have to go through. A lot of other people like her, like her, like well, whoever else is in this room that is that is black may not think that way, may not think like, oh, let me work so hard now so that way when, I, when my kids are born, they can have all the money. No, but you know what we're doing? Popping out babies left and right every single day. We're popping out a baby, popping out a baby, popping out a baby, popping out a baby. And then we got to work at this bullcrap Burger King White Castle to try to afford things for our kids. No offense if anybody watching this video that worked there. What I'm saying is that you have a child, three children, and you're trying to live off this income, this minimum wage income that, you know what I'm saying, for your children. Now your children growing up poor and all these different things when they could have grew up rich and have all this money if you just sat back, locked in, and just grinded your butt off to work hard for your kids. That's how you, you know what I'm saying? That's how these kids are raising generational wealth. It's a mindset thing, bro. My mindset is different from everybody else's mindset. A lot of other people's mindset. Anyways, come on. Yeah. Okay, hang on. Will we still have access to the same things, right? Right. So what do you, what do you think about that? What do well, you think about your white privilege? I definitely do think that even though I am on, I guess, the lower class level, I still think that white privilege exists. Like, I agree with your statement. And it's like... I don't want to say it's not hang something that we can help, but it's just how people look at things today. And, Wait, can and you give me an example, though? Because hang on, that's a, you, you know what she did? Can I just say, hey, everyone, can, can I just say this really fast? That's a script. That's one of the scripts that your generation has learned. It's like, yeah, I know I have a, I, this isn't bad. Like, you're good. Like, you're, you're the good, you're a good white person, right? <laughs> yeah. That you you. Learn, you learn the script. I know I have a certain amount of privilege. Man, you could be living on the streets, eating rats for dinner, eating whatever, and you could still be like, oh, no, but I got the script, but I still have privilege because I'm white. It's like, hang on a sec. So go back. Give me one way in which you have white privilege. Your whiteness gives you privilege. Oh, my God. I mean... I haven't, like, I don't know. I haven't had a situation, at least in my life yet, where that has come into play, where I've been against someone who's not white, and it was like I needed a different opportunity, but like, for example, like job opportunities, I'm sure that m more in the future would necessarily, would probably presented, be presented to someone who is white rather than someone who's of color. Um, I don't know, like we were talking about financial aid and stuff, like scholarships and stuff. Uh -huh. um, being able to go to Penn State, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I really haven't been put into a position yet in okay. my life where okay. that has happened. But can, can I say to you all and to everybody else, as far as I know, Penn State has no scholarships dedicated for poor white people. I don't think there's a single one out there. Yeah, right now, I can't receive more financial aid this semester. So I have like a $2,000 bill that I got to figure out how to pay in like the next two weeks, uh -huh. which sucks. Um, but yeah, I mean. Okay. And you, okay, so hang on real fast. We're going to come back. How long would it take you to pay her $2,000 bill? You're Puerto, she's Puerto, what? Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have to worry about that. But um, so in my opinion, like white privilege is a real thing. And I really do think white people have an advantage over minorities. 
However, there also is a big divide between the rich and poor, and I think that's a whole separate issue. So, and, okay, go ahead, go ahead. And yeah, so I feel like you're less privileged than me, because, well, like I don't have money, but my parents have money and it's nice, so I don't have to worry about certain things that you have to. Like, so like how much money, I don't, I don't want specifics, but like a lot of money, your parents are really rich. I mean, They're wealthy. like, yeah. Like you could call them right now and say, I need $2,000, because I gotta give it to my classmate. And well, they, no, they make me work for things. No, no, I got you, I got you. But, but you could, if you needed two grand, you could get it. Yeah. Okay, dude, just trying to hook you up, my friend, all right? <laughs> Look, so how do you, so how do the three of you make, she's Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, Puerto Rican, so you have, like in the United States, you have Native, Amer Native Americans, right? Then you have Black Americans, then you have Puerto Rican Americans, then Mexican Americans, and so on. So, like, how do you incorporate her into the way society is organized? Since she clearly has far more privilege and power than her. But that's looking at you, looking between the two, you wouldn't be able to tell. And it's, it's all about the optics. And that's how America works. I it's agree. all about the optics? I agree. Yeah? Yeah, like we don't know their intersectionality yet until they open their mouths. But when we look at you and we make an assumptions, and I'm not saying myself, but how America generalizes, we don't know that you have to pay $2,000. We don't know that your family's wealthy. So, I mean, at the end of the day, how does that work in your favor? At the end of the day, looking at you, you're still white. Yeah, but okay, so listen, man. So hang on, hang on. <laughs> what, you, what I just heard you say was that in the end, Right. So tell me if I'm wrong here. Right. But what I think I just heard you say was it really in the end. She's as well off or better off than her. What I'm hearing you say, though, and you I want you to to you to respond to this is that she's still she's still better off. In what ways is she better off than her, man? Like in what ways? Like I don't see from any the, way from, in which the, she's... from the visual, like before you get to know them, before they open their mouths, what do you assume? Yeah, but come on, man. You're... I don't assume anything. I don't just assume that oh, she's white. She has privilege. Who? I, I, how could I assume that? You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't assume anything about her. You feel me? That's like... And one thing I'm learning, and like I said, I'm not perfect at this, but one thing I'm learning, because each and every day, as y'all know, you, you, you grow, you learn, you learn more and more and more. So one thing I am learning is that we need to stop looking at people's appearance and think that they are a certain way that they're really not. You know what I'm saying? It's this guy I work with, and I never thought nothing about this dude, never. You know what I'm saying? But I could just imagine what other people may think about him. You know what I'm saying? He got tattoos all on his face, tattoos all on his neck, tattoos all on his arm, but the man worked three different jobs. And, and, he, and, he, and he's black. You know what I'm saying? And he got dreads. So, you know, a lot of people will assume that oh, he's a gangster, he this. Nah, he don't. He got two kids, he got, a, he got a girlfriend, he got a big house, he got a car. Like, he got all these different things, and that's why, you know what I'm saying, what we need to start, like, I am... Partially, I'm I'm somewhat am agreeing with her though because I see that a lot of people do just look at the appearance and say, "Hey, uh, this person, this this person is is this way because they look this way." Like, no, we don't know what this person is based off the way they look. I never would have assumed that she was going through what she was going through, and when I look at her for the first time, I don't look at, "Oh, that's a privileged white girl." You know what I'm saying? And, and same thing with, with black people. Oh, when, I, when I look at a person with dreads, I just can't assume all the man, oh, dang, this is a gangster. He a gangster, bro. He a thug. The whole time, they might not even be that way. You think people look at me that way like, oh, you a gangster. You this because I got tattoos. I'm pretty big. Like, all these different things. But the whole time, I'm a man of God, like a true man of God. So, therefore, I'm not even what people may seem, may think that I am. It's like that. As Americans, we need to stop looking at people and assuming what they are when they're really not that way. That's why we need to get to know them before we just start to jump to conclusions to say that they are a certain way. We need to know a person's story. We are going to... So now what I'm doing is I'm sitting out... Okay, I'm sitting out here. All right? Bro. I'm sitting next to you. Okay? Our... I'm sitting out here, and I'm just the average person who's thinking about this stuff, right? And I'm like, man, you have not made a convincing argument, because her, what's your, what's your name again? Alexandria. But Alexandria. Alex. Alex. I'm just like, 
Come on, man. You, your framework doesn't account for the fact that Alex's family is rich and her family. Rich. I'm just going to say. But they're rich. two separate issues. Oh, yeah, we're talking about race and white privilege, and we're talking about the wealth inequality um, gap. Two different. Yeah, but white privilege is also about wealth and inequality. They're all together. I don't know how you could separate them. I'm not talking about. Are we talking about, well, she won't get followed around in a store by a security guard, but, but you will? It's like, come on, man, white, so that's how you're defining white privilege. So, so I would say open it up because we're throwing this idea around here. It's like, damn, because she, I'm, and by the way, I'm just put, I'm, we're now just, I'm playing, I'm just having the conversation. Like you got a lot of people sitting right here in her seat that are going like, I, I I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting this. And you got a lot of people sitting in her seat who, a person of color who's got a lot of money, and then we're looking at her and going like, like, dude, all the people in your town are going to look at her and be like, oh, yeah, I'd rather be me, the white person, than her? How many people in your graduating class would say that? Well, I graduated from my high school. It was probably like 40% white people. I moved to Easton, which is like a little different than my uh, like hometown. Hometown, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there are some racist people, but most people wouldn't. No, 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 but I'm just asking. Can you, want to res can you also respond? Yeah, yeah I got you. I, We're mean, gonna come. I was just going to respond to the whole, like, white privilege thing. I feel like white privilege, it goes in, like, different aspects, like she said. So I feel like for the aspects regarding, like, financials and finances and, like, monetary things, I feel like just statistically speaking, white privilege is basically just saying, statistically speaking, if you're a person of, like, Caucasian background, your family is more likely to have general Generate, uh, generational wealth that's uh, gonna allow you, you know, to be privileged like her and to get in college. But again, there's always anomalies. Like, you know, sometimes your parents or your great grandparents got lucky. Like my great parent, my grandparents came from Jamaica, started a business, and then they like became like millionaires, like in New York. So there's always anomalies, but at the same time, it's gonna be diff like it's difficult. So her herself, like if she steps in a place. You know, her employer knows nothing about her background, and these two women come into one job market, and, you know, the employer is someone of, like, basic, you know, American views, are, like, uh, views that are commonly seen in America, like, one person's more likely to get the job than the other, so it's, it's okay. like, in finances, and it's, like... Okay, listen, man, so one thing you just said, your, so your grandparents became millionaires in New York? Well, like... Like, yeah. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude, so right there, the moment you say that, you understand, if I'm her, if I'm, I'm you, I'm just like, and now I'm in a class and we're going to start throwing words around like race inequality and white privilege and this and that, and I'm you, what do you think, she, what do you think she's thinking? I feel like, I mean, she'd probably think, I feel like it's still, it's still weird though, because it's still like, no, that's just one person in my whole entire family that I allowed me to be where I am today. I got But you. like on average, like there's going to be percentile wise, there's going to be more people, more white people, like of Caucasian background who have like two parents, two grandparents yep, yep, of that yep. same background. And that's where the privilege comes in. Okay. So listen, man, let me just so come, come back. This is, this would take a long time to air out. Absolutely. Like you got to look at the numbers. We're going to look in, at this class, at not, not just individual examples, obviously numbers. But what I'm trying to point out is like, first off, this guy right here, dude, the, the white guy, he's, you know, like we throw these words around and we throw stuff around and we take classes like 119 and we throw words and we expect everyone to get the white privilege stuff. It's like people aren't getting, it's not landing. It's not going to land. It just doesn't land until we, the, it, until we wrestle. So Bro, shout shout out to uh, shout out to SOC. Uh, I'm a, I'm just gonna call it Sock 119. Uh, but shout out to them, man, because in all honesty, I feel like people need to hear this type of stuff. Like people need to understand that this white privilege thing that people like to talk about. I don't believe that it truly exists the way that they think it exists. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comment section below what y'all truly think about white privilege and do y'all feel like this junk actually exists the way that people make it seem like it exists. Uh, like I said, you know, growing up in generational wealth, 
we can do the same thing if we put our mind to it. If we actually think the way that some white people actually think, then we will be able to start the generational wealth thing and do what we have to do uh, also. But y'all let me know in the comment section below what y'all think about this uh, What y'all think about this type of video. Do you believe white privilege is this? If you are white, have you have that white privilege landed on your shoulders? Y'all let me know. Subscribe to the second channel, man. It's been your boy, Depan. Uh, it's in the link description below, second channel. I love each and one of y'all. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.